In this video, we will learn all about histograms. A histogram is like a type of vertical bar graph. In fact, a histogram looks a lot like a bar graph, but the key difference is in a histogram, the bars touch, while in a traditional bar graph, the bars do not touch. The reason for this is that in a histogram, the bars represent continuous data as opposed to distinct separate categories. They represent continuous data that's been broken into specific groups or intervals. We can analyze histograms based on their shape. One of the things in particular that we can look for is any modes and see if the data is unimodal, so it has one mode, or bimodal if there are multiple modes, or two modes, or multimodal if there are even more than two modes. Here are two examples of histograms. Notice that they're made up of bars and the bars are touching. The one on the left shows one clear mode. This is the area that is most common. It has the highest frequency. So we would say that this is a unimodal group of data. Whereas the one on the right has two clear standout modes places where the frequency is higher than the rest. So this would be a bimodal set of data. When you're making a histogram, you have to decide how to split up the data or where to cut off to make each specific little bar. And each of those groups is called a bin when you're making a histogram. So for example, with this histogram up here on the left, we had six different bins because there were six different groups. But we could have broken down that same data into 12 different groups and there just would have been more bars. What's important is that each bin is the same size, not meaning the same height, but the same width and encompasses the same range of data. So perhaps the first bar is from 0 to 5, then the next has to be from 5 to 10, and then from 10 to 15, and from 15 to 20, and so on. You can't just randomly change the size of the bins because then it distorts the whole histogram. So therefore, before you make a histogram, the most important thing is you look at your table that sort of shows you all of your data and decide how big do you want each bin? How many bins do you want? What is your overall range of data that you're going to have to break down into distinct bins? And make that decision about how big your bins are before starting to even make your histogram. But once you have all your data broken down into the different bins, it's really easy to just make the histogram based on that. It's just like making a bar graph. So you would think about in your first bin, so maybe that's all the data that's between zero and five, there are eight values. So you'd make a bar that went up to eight. And then in your next bin, maybe there are from five to 10, there are two values. So you'd go up to two and so on. So again, the most important thing is constructing your bins so that they're all the same size and are able to encompass all of your data.